My name is Karen Trevon and I work for the U.S. General Services Administration. Um, and my little piece of the world is called the Center for Excellence in Digital Government. And I uh, do work on uh, challenge.gov and when I'm not doing that, I'm an IT project manager. But um, I wanted to uh, talk to you today about, about challenge.gov, of course. And I've actually never run a crowdsourcing effort myself, but I'm in this unique position of getting to sit back and watch what everyone else does. So um, not only do I help people get started and use challenge.gov itself, but we um, and my coworker, Tammy Marcoulier, we try to give ag federal agencies advice just based on you know what we've seen over the last three years or so. My name is David Viatoro. And I'm Rita Young. And we are from USC and we work on the Ask for Healthy Kids competition. I get this message at first I'm shocked. I'm um, like, oh my gosh, we won. I, I never win things like this. My name is Tony Blackwell and this is my dad. We, I am 11 years old and together we won the Ask for Healthy Kids challenge. My name is Karen Laszlo and I am from Boulder, Colorado. I worked on apps for healthy kids. We won $10,000 for the grand prize winner. I'm Lewis C and uh, this is my team and uh, we're students at Arizona State University and uh, we entered the Go Viral Challenge and uh, we won $2,000. Our submission was tonysplate.com. It's useful for people with type 1 diabetes. I was kind of like the inspiration. I learned that, you know, having diabetes can't all be that bad. Sometimes there's a lot of good that can come from it. And we loved working on the game. Being able to make a game that helps people is always such a thrill. And so we we're hoping to work on it further. And the competition provided just extra momentum, extra motivation to do so. Uh, so Trainer is a game that was developed to help kids um, who play it develop healthy eating and exercise habits. Um, and the whole idea was to give them this fun uh, piece of software that they can interact with. Um, essentially, they're given a creature that is customized just to them, um, that they are given the responsibility of training and taking care of. Um, and in doing so and having fun and enjoying interacting with them, they are uh, secretly um, also learning about uh, what it takes to exercise and become healthy and make good eating choices. Sir, sir, step away from the pool. You might want to know that chlorine actually does not kill all germs instantly. And actually, have any of you had pool water in your mouth? That's a citation, sir. Yeah, we're going to take him downtown, have him processed. But he'll also be informed. And that's what this is all about. That's what we're here for. Challenge.gov was launched um, back in September of 2010. And challenge and prize competitions have a lot of support in the Obama administration. They were first mentioned back in 2009 in the President's Strategy for American Innovation. They were mentioned in the Open Government Directive and um, the America Competes Act, which passed in early 2011, actually gave a lot of federal agencies the authority to run challenge and prize competitions. A lot of agencies didn't have it before. Um, so in this, um, there was a memo that we got from the White House Office of Management and Budget in March of 2010, and we were asked to build challenge.gov. And um, we got a lot of memos like this. Uh, we were asked to do it in 120 days, and uh, we didn't have any funding or any extra people. So, <laughs> but we, we made it. Um, so we ended up partnering with a New York City company called Challenge Post. And they basically, for free, built a government version of challengepost.com. So that is now challenge.gov. So um, I encourage you to, um, Challenge Post is right here in New York, but I don't think they could be here. But um, please check out their website when you get a chance. And so um, now on challenge.gov, you can find um, 200, over 240 different challenge and prize competitions from 56 different agencies and bureaus around the federal government. When we started, um, 
almost three years ago, we had maybe 35 challenges from 15 different parts of the government. And as you can see, the, um, pr the prize purses being offered aren't always huge, and it doesn't necessarily have to be money. A lot of um, federal agencies are offering um, other kinds of prizes, like a meeting with an important um, cabinet secretary, or a photo opportunity, an award ceremony, something like that that would have value to a contestant, someone they would want to meet. And so challenge.gov is free for the public, of course, and free for other government agencies to use. So you can uh, run your challenge completely on challenge.gov, or you can um, use other sites like TopCoder, and you can list your challenge on challenge.gov, and that way all the government challenges are captured on challenge.gov, and it's one place that the public can go and see everything. They don't have to know all these different websites. And it's a really great archive because all the challenges that have ever been run on the site stay there even after the contest is closed. So it's a nice research tool if you ever want to see, you know, has anybody ever done anything like this? You can easily go to challenge.gov and check that out. And the, um, one of the main reasons why we uh, built challenge.gov is we wanted all the agencies in the government to focus on the substance of their challenge and getting the question right, as we've been talking about for the last day and a half, asking the right question. So we wanted to have the web shell built so they didn't have to worry about that and they can focus on the substance. And of course it would be you know, a waste of time and money for everybody to go out and build a separate website for their, for their challenge and prize competitions. So here's um, just a few things that the public can do on challenge.gov. They can, of course, enter um, a challenge. Um, if they have questions, there's a discussion board built in there. So you can ask your question to the government agency if you are unclear at all as to any of the rules or anything. A lot of the challenges use public voting. Um, that's an option that can be turned on or off, but that's a nice um, public engagement tool that you can use. And um, there's a tool where you can sign up as a follower. Maybe you're not going to enter the challenge. Maybe you don't have the skills to enter, but you think it's a neat idea and you want to be updated. You can sign up to receive email updates about the uh, particular challenge. And there's some social media capability where if you see something that a friend or family member might like to know about, you can uh, send it to them by Twitter or email or Facebook. So just a few um, little tidbits about um, what makes a successful uh, challenge and prize competition, at least in the government. Um, this is a quotation from Dr. Alok Das from the Air Force Research Lab. He says, ask the impossible in an unreasonable amount of time. And um, I have a friend who works at the Energy Department, Chris Irwin. He did um, a challenge called Apps for Energy. And from the time the idea came to be, and the time they launched it on challenge.gov, it was five weeks. So that was, um, that's kind of an example of asking the impossible in an unreasonable amount of time. Um, I think one of his challenges was he had to kind of borrow uh, staff people from other departments. And it was, you know, he said, I'm gonna borrow these people for five weeks. And that sounds a lot more palatable than saying, I'm gonna borrow them for five months. <laughs> so he was able to uh, get the help he needed from around the department. So we are, um, there used to be, uh, for a long time, it seemed like, you know, every challenge and prize competition got about 30 entries. That seemed to be the norm for quite a while, but now we're seeing 100, 200 entries in each challenge. Uh, a lot of challenges have um, celebrity judges. Um, for example, Craig Newmark, who's the founder of Craigslist, is a big fan of the, a lot of the um, Obama administration's open government work. And so he's been a judge in several challenge and prize competitions, and that might be an incentive for someone to enter if they can get their work in front of Craig Newmark. Um, I mentioned the America Competes Act a little while ago. Um, one thing that that act did was it gave federal agencies the capability to partner with the private sector for um, on challenge and prize competitions. So that certainly helps with um, the prize purse and with publicity. Um, as much help as you can get, the better. So my first little story um, sort of relates to, it doesn't, this actually doesn't relate to a challenge, but it's related to 
um, a lot of the government work going on in open data. I don't know if any of you have heard of data.gov or if you've ever checked out that website. That's another uh, site that our office runs. So this um, app called iTriage was built from uh, open government data on data.gov. So this was created by a physician and a colleague. It allows you to, um, you know, based on your symptoms, um, make appointments, um, learn about different medications, and um, a nice little success story is that this was recently acquired by Aetna, and now they have 90 employees. So it's a nice example of how open data, open data kind of helped start a business. And this um, story is um, one of the favorite stories that the White House likes to tell. Wendy Schmidt, I think she is the wife of um, the founder of Google. And um, so she wanted to um, do a challenge related to how can we um, clean up oil spills much faster and, and much more effectively. So there was a uh, challenge done, and this uh, was through maybe the XPRIZE Foundation, I think. And what they were trying to do was, um, their target was two times today's standard oil recovery rate. And what ended up happening in this challenge is they actually got four times the uh, standard oil recovery rate. So they actually exceeded what they thought they could do. And that, um, that happens a lot with challenges. We find that you know, the contestants often do better than you thought they ever would. And um, this is a nice example of how the government was a partner in this challenge because this picture that you see is actually a Department of Interior test facility. There's a part of the Interior Department that's responsible for um, for oil drilling, and so this is a test facility that they have in New Jersey. So they were able to participate in the challenge as a partner by offering up their test facility. So that's another way that you know the government can be involved in, in challenges. So um, my first story is about, um, this is a challenge that's currently open. This is called um, the Medical Appointment Scheduling Contest. And um, the Veterans Affairs Department um, put a lot of money towards trying to get a solution to this to this issue through traditional procurement. So they're and they haven't been successful yet. So what they're trying to do is hopefully finally solve this problem for a, a lot less money. Uh, the prize one money is um, up to three million dollars each for up to three winners. So they're giving themselves a lot of wiggle room there as far as how much is dispersed into how many people. But um, I think we all know that. Um, Big, I'm sure you've all heard it on the news, a lot of big government IT projects uh, fall behind schedule and over budget. Um, your average government CIO maybe stays for about 18 months, and there's a lot of accountability and continuity that's getting lost in these big IT projects. So they're a, um, a popular um, source for challenges now. This is a uh, challenge from the National Cancer Institute using public data for cancer prevention. And um, this is a nice, really nice story because one of the winners was um, a young woman named Dr. Mia Levy. And uh, with the National Institutes of Health, your VITA, your background, your resume are very important towards you know, getting an NIH grant or a contract. But her being young, not as experienced as some other folks, she was having trouble breaking in and you know, getting an NIH grant or contract. But she was able to pull a team together and enter this challenge and be one of the winners. So it's a nice way of getting people in who might have had the door blocked previously. Uh, flu apps from the Centers for Disease Control. Um, this challenge got almost 100 entries and the prize money was $35,000, so pretty, pretty low cost. And they were able to um, get a lot of individuals and small businesses involved in this challenge, people who don't normally you know, bid on government contracts. So I won't read it all, because you can see it there, you know, all the different types of people that entered. And they got um, you know, representation from all across the country, not just the Atlanta area or the DC area. And they also um, realized you know, kind of obviously, um, I'll just read a little quotation to you. Technology and solutions shown in the flu app challenge are not necessarily influenza specific and can be adapted to meet other health information dissemination needs. 
So they realized, hey, you know, if we can do this for flu, we can do this for all kinds of other things. So hopefully whatever they learned, they will spread that around the CDC and they'll use the same model for other health information campaigns. Uh, next, I wanted to mention this um, Million Hearts Risk Check Challenge. Um, and this is also from uh, the Department of Health and Human Services. And Million Hearts is a, a national campaign for um, stroke and heart attack prevention. So this is a nice example of how you can take a broad campaign that you're doing over a course of years and you can make a challenge or a contest or competition part of it. Um, one of the things that you can do on challenge.gov is request a custom URL. So whatever your campaign is, you can work that into your um, challenge.gov URL. So this was probably millionhearts.challenge.gov. And the uh, winning um, app was Heart Health Mobile. And so this teaches about heart disease risk based on information you enter about your weight, um, other health issues, um, tells you where you can get screenings close to home for cholesterol and high blood pressure. And this is another uh, nice data story, the um, Department of Labor Inform Action Challenge. Um, the Department of Labor has a chief innovation officer. A lot of federal agencies are getting those now, or they're taking an innovative person they already have and bestowing that uh, job title. But the government collects um, tons of data, you know, and we all pay for it as taxpayers. But um, unfortunately, that data is not um, always turned around into a um, something helpful that the public can use. So challenges are a great way to take that raw data and turn it into something that the public can use and understand. Um, I think the government has trouble attracting um, this type of talent to work in-house. I, I guess we probably need to up our pay scale on that <laughs> and modernize our personnel system, but for now um, the crowd is a great way to get this done. So one of the winners of this challenge was an app called Eat Sleep Shop. And I think a lot of people are looking now at doing business with um, entities that are good corporate citizens. So you can use this app to help you um, find a restaurant with a good health record, um, find a, a hotel with a good cleanliness record, um, you know, for where you shop. Um, is that store, you know, a good corporate citizen? So um, that's... Um, an app that you can um, probably get from um, either from challenge.gov or from the iTunes store. And this is also another example from the Department of Labor. This was a um, challenge for um, helping the public understand uh, the job market and training opportunities. Um, as we were talking about a second ago, um, the government collects lots of data. There's not a lot of awareness of it. We don't really get budget for advertising these things. So we have to kind of bootstrap it. So um, challenges and prizes are one way that we're doing that. Um, so this, uh, the winner of uh, this challenge was called Where Are the Jobs? And as you can see, it allows you to look at salaries for different jobs um, by state, by region. And um, this, so this is a good way for the government to um, as I said, we're reaching out to um, developers and coders and you know people that we might not have on hand in our in our own buildings. So I think this is my final challenge story, uh, the Veterans Affairs Blue Button Challenge. So um, there are, um, of course, a lot of veterans in our country. Um, there are they are young and old. Um, some of them get their care from VA hospitals and some, you know, are using other parts of the healthcare system. But the winner of this blue button challenge was the first to install the personal health record blue button on patient facing websites of 25,000 doctors. And so the winner of this challenge was able to do that in four months after the opening date. And um, that good work kept going. Um, I think that grew to 200,000 sites and maybe it's even bigger now. But um, as we were talking about earlier, the um, results of a challenge and prize competition often exceed what you thought they were going to. So this is just another example of that. Um, a lot of times in traditional procurement, you know, you might have to pay a bonus or something to, you know, get extra results. So this is a nice way to get extra results with not necessarily having to pay 
extra for it. So this challenge was executed fairly quickly and inexpensively by the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, $50,000 was the prize, and they estimate that it took about $30,000 in staff time. They had a lot of backing, um, executive buy-in from chief technology officers at the White House, at the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We were talking a few minutes ago about partnering with the private sector. Um, foundations are another popular um, partner. And um, so things, good things just keep coming out of this challenge, even though it's closed. Um, you know, the kind of the momentum keeps continuing. So um, a California health IT developer, um, have come, they've come up with a blue button mobile app that allows patients to transmit health information to their doctor's tablet. Um, I know a lot of times when I go to the doctor, I just see a physician assistant because it's usually something minor. And um, most of the time it's someone 10 years younger than me who's walking around with a laptop and mm -hmm. now she's probably carrying an iPad and not writing anything down um, illegibly. So it's, you know, um, it's a much better way to do things. Um, the Walgreens is putting the blue button on their patient portals and kiosk in their stores. Um, Aetna is adding this to their patient portals. So this is a nice you know, quotation that just sums up the success of this challenge. The challenge validated blue button technology as part of the routine way in which doctors across America and their patients share health information. So um, I wanted to just share, you know, as I get ready to close up, um, some of the things we're doing um, besides uh, challenge.gov, some of our other educational efforts. Um, we have a pretty big um, community of practice in the federal government that's interested in these issues. Um, I think we have about 540 people on our email listserv. Um, we do a lot of training through our Digital Gov University program that's been around for a while. Um, and of course, we partner with NASA and the White House on those things. So you can um, go to um, another site that our office runs is howto.gov, and so we keep all the training that we've done archived there, and you can also see you know, what things are coming up. We came up with a step-by-step -step toolkit for people that are new to this. There seemed to be a need and a demand for that. What are all the steps and all the things I have to think about and do? So I wrote a step-by-step uh, -step toolkit, and that's posted on howto.gov, just to get people acclimated to all the different all the different pieces of it. And um, another thing that the White House asked us to do at the same time that they asked us to build challenge.gov was they asked us to set up a GSA schedule. And um, I'll explain what that is. Um, what a GSA schedule is, is it is a list of pre-approved government vendors. Um, our agency, the General Services Administration, is the agency that sort of comes up with these pre-cleared lists of vendors for IT and all sorts of other things. So the GSA schedule for challenge and competition services is number 541 4G, and we have 15 companies on it right now. So if a federal agency um, wants to, you know, maybe not use challenge.gov, but use top coder or use challenge post, they can do that a lot faster and easier if the vendor is on this GSA approved list. So. Um, let me know if you're interested in any information about that. So what's, what's going well? We have a lot of, lot of things that are going really great. So just about every federal agency has experimented at this point with challenge and pro challenges and prizes in some small or large way. And although we're seeing less challenges being launched right now, the ones that are coming out are trying to tackle bigger problems. Like we were talking a little while ago about electronic uh, health records, um, huge issue. Um, the amount of entries is going up. You know, instead of 30 or 40, we're seeing 100, 200, and I think that's I think that's great. And we're educating new people all the time, you know, through training. Um, we'll come and do an in-person demo. We get lots of phone calls and emails, and uh, a lot of people need our help. So um, between GSA and Jason and the White House, we're kind of like three legs of a stool, and we're all trying to um, drive this in the government. So what we need to work on, things that aren't going uh, quite as well as they should. Um, Grants and procurement are kind of the way that government traditionally spends money. 
And um, I guess challenges involve, you know, sort of a different kind of relationship. Um, we have like a structure set up around how grant and procurement works and how those relationships work. But with challenges, we it's not really institutionalized yet. We don't really have a challenge office <laughs> at each government agency. So it's, um, it's a little different and it's a little more of a personal, you know, unstructured relationship. So that's just something that all of us in the government are getting used to. Um, another um, entity that takes a lot of getting used to is our, all of our agency offices of general counsel. Um, <laughs> they need a lot of education on this because it is different than a grant or a procurement, um, but they seem to feel comforted if we can take them to challenge.gov and just show them all the examples and show them an example that's similar to what they're contemplating. Um, also, the open nature of challenges is, is a little scary for, for some agencies that are, you know, traditionally have been very interested in credentials because um, when people enter a challenge, it's sort of anonymous and you don't really know who they are or much about them. And so that's um, another thing that's a little, you know, that's going to take a little getting used to. Um, keeping up relationships with the winners and the contestants after the um, challenge has ended. This is something that we're trying to um, spend a lot of time with training on this, this year is um, making sure that you don't just um, run a challenge because you were told to and then check the box off and never think about it again. That's uh, definitely not what we want. Um, we have, a, of course, like everyone else, we're you know dealing with hiring freezes, unfilled vacancies. It feels like everybody's doing several people's jobs. So we're trying to make sure that we keep the quality of these challenges up, even though we're all kind of stretched thin. And um, also tooting our horns about results. This is another thing that we need to get better at. Um, just we, I think we tend to focus all our publicity on when the challenge is open. We publicize it a lot to get a lot of people to enter. But then afterwards, we need to have like another communications plan for how we're going to you know, broadcast the results to the whole world and tell everybody how well it went. So we're trying to do a lot of training about that this year, too. I would love to hear you know, what challenges you think the government should run, or do you think there's too many out there? Or if you've entered one, you know, what made you do it? What did you like or not like about it? So if there's anybody in here that fits that description, I would love to talk to you. I really appreciate you letting me be here today. Thank you.